So, here's the deal. When you start putting a girl way up high, treating her like she's some kind of ultimate prize, something happens in her head. She's like, well, I'm the big deal here. I can chill a bit, no need to go all out, no need to constantly impress him. Suddenly, she realizes she's got options. And you know what? When she gets into that mindset, her interest in you starts to fade. So in today's video, we're diving into how you can switch things up, how to make her see you as the prize. So in the whole interaction, you're the one she's going after. Let's make this sound more like a casual conversation. Here's the thing that's super clear. Whenever you start treating a woman like she's on a whole different level, she kind of starts looking at you like you're beneath her. It's just how we're wired. Anyway, let's talk about how you can switch it up and make yourself the prize in her eyes. Because truth be told, that's what she's after, just as much as you are. Now, some guys think, if I treat her like a princess, if I treat her like the ultimate prize, I've got her. But here's the deal. We all want to be with someone we see as the prize. So if you're making her out to be the big deal, she's thinking, well, if I'm the prize, he's not. You get what I'm saying. She can't see you both as the prize. We all want to be with someone we've got to put in some effort for. And if you're not giving her that challenge, you're missing the whole romantic vibe. Because for a woman, romance is about winning a guy over. She wants to snag that prize, you know. So, how do you go about doing that? Let's break down five ways you can position yourself as the prize. First up, it's more of a mindset thing. The unwavering belief that you're the real deal. Now, I get it. This can be a challenge for many guys. They start thinking, I'm not the prize. She's way better looking, more outgoing, has more rock solid friends. They build up this whole mental image that she's the catch. But here's the kicker. We've all come across that dude who's not rolling in money, not the most handsome, but he's rock solid in the belief that he's the prize. And you know what? People, especially women, buy into that. When you're confidently slapping a high price tag on yourself, it changes the game. Now, here's the deal. I've come across a bunch of guys, good looking, solid jobs, decent sense of humor, basically ticking all the boxes. But guess what? Women keep ghosting them or losing interest. You talk to these guys, and it's pretty clear. They've got this habit of putting women on a pedestal, thinking the woman's the big prize. And like I mentioned earlier, the moment she catches on that she's the big deal, her interest in you takes a nosedive. Let me share a story about my buddy John from college. He had this saying, if you think you're the man and you act like the man, others will think you're the man. And if others think you're the man, well then, you're the man. Same goes for being the prize. If you genuinely believe you're the prize, you start behaving like it. And when you act like the prize, women start treating you like the prize. It's a simple chicken or the egg situation, but it all starts with that unshakable belief that you are the prize. Now let's dive into how you actually put that belief into action when you're with a woman. How do you show up without flat out saying, hey, I'm the prize? Because you know if you just tell someone, they're likely to be like, yeah, right. I don't buy it, or that doesn't seem true. But if she gets that vibe on her own, well, that's the sweet spot. As we talked about earlier, it's all about acting like it. And when you do, that's when she starts believing it. So let's get into how you actually pull off this acting like the price thing. Step number two, and this is a significant one. Cut out the validation chasing. Here's the deal. When two people link up, one usually ends up trying harder, holding less power in the dynamic. But there's also this thing called a validation vacuum. When a guy and a gal come together, whether it's a date or just hanging out, there's this gap where someone's aiming for validation. Someone's trying to impress the other. It's like this unspoken rule. If it's not happening, it's like, whoa, what's up? So if he's up on trying to impress her, she's naturally going to try to fill that void by impressing you and snagging some validation. Because, you know, someone's got to do it. 
It's just the way it goes when two people connect. So stop chasing her validation, and you'll see you're starting to chase yours. So, what's the deal with stopping the chase for validation? It's pretty straightforward. Stop overthinking. Quit trying so hard to impress her. Stop overthinking and going. What can I say that's impressive about me? Okay, I've got this cool job. I can talk about the promotion I snagged. Mention the town I live in because, you know, she'll probably think it's great. Throw in details about my vacations, my ride, all that stuff. We might not do it consciously, but when we're around someone we want to impress, our brains automatically head in that direction. Even going overboard to prove you're a funny guy, cracking jokes, telling entertaining stories. It's like you're the entertainer and she's the audience you're trying to win over. But here's the thing. Women actually want to be the ones winning you over. They want you to be the audience that's not impossible to win, but doesn't laugh at everything or give immediate applause. They like a bit of a challenge, so let her take the lead on that switch, because that's where she feels more at ease, and it's what she'd rather do. Now here's another nugget to chew on when we talk about ditching the validation chase. It's always more effective to show instead of just telling. Think about it. A lot of times, you might feel the urge to spill about your latest trip to Australia or brag about your new job promotion. But what you're really doing is trying to showcase a trait, right? Like, hey, I travel to Australia, so I'm adventurous. Or, I got this job promotion to show I'm a leader and I'm good at what I do. But here's the deal. We tend to believe things more when we see them for ourselves. So instead of talking her ear off about your adventures, be adventurous with her. Instead of telling her you're a leader at work, show it. Take charge, make bold moves, lead the vibe. Let her come to her own conclusion, like, oh, this guy's a leader. Same goes for the adventurous side. Instead of boasting about your daring escapades, be adventurous with her. Say, this is kind of dull. I know this cool place we can check out. It's way more believable than just trying to impress her with a long laundry list of your achievements is to keep in mind another key thing. Steering clear of overly explaining yourself. Look, if someone's the prize and you're hoping they'll dig you, the tendency is to justify things. Like if you're not entirely comfortable with your job, you might find yourself saying, oh, I'm just doing this temporarily until I find something better. That's explaining yourself or maybe you're not in the best shape, especially during the holidays, and you start going, normally, I'm in better shape, but I've been letting myself go lately. That's explaining too. When you do that, you're basically shouting, your opinion means a lot to me, and I'm trying to impress you. Flip the script on that. You want to ditch the validation chase because by doing so, she'll naturally start seeking your validation to fill that gap. So, the third thing to keep in mind when it comes to being the prize is being the decision maker. This is something a lot of guys struggle to grasp when you're out with a woman, especially on those first couple of dates. I've seen guys mess it up. The woman loses interest, and it's because she sees herself as the prize in his eyes with the way he's treating her. Once she knows she's the prize, she's thinking, I've got options. When I say be the decision maker, it means entering with the attitude of not automatically being impressed or wanting her to be your girlfriend. You think she's cool, attractive, definitely want to explore if there's a spark, but you don't have all the answers yet. You want to get to know her, making you the decision maker. Now how does this play out? I call it next level deep validation, next level deep curiosity. Before validating, be curious. For instance, she says she's a lawyer. The usual move for a guy trying to impress is, wow, that's so cool, it must have been tough. You make good money, right? We're going next level. Validating her based on assumptions. But here's the thing, we don't know why she chose to be a lawyer. So, instead of the usual compliments, go next level deep with your curiosity. What made you decide to be a lawyer? How did you come to that decision? Keep going deeper. Always be curious to learn more. This way, she's in her head thinking. He wants to know why I got drawn to law. 
It triggers her to impress you, and you end up learning the real reasons she chose her path. It's not just a generic compliment, it's a meaningful connection. Plus, it positions you as not easily won over. So always go next level deep with your curiosity before validating a woman. Now let's talk about a straightforward one this time. So, here's something practical. Ask her for a favor. If you want someone to like you, ask them for a favor. It sounds counterintuitive. Why would asking for something make someone like you more? Well, it's this thing called effort justification. Here's the deal. When we find ourselves doing something for a reason, we want to believe it's worth it. It's the same with goals. If you're busting your butt for a new job, you're doing it because it's going to let you live the life you want, right? So if she's doing you a favor, her brain starts justifying it. Like, why am I doing this? Oh, I must like this guy. It must be worth it. It's an effort justification. I had this buddy Doug who was a wizard with women. He'd pull this move all the time. We'd be at a bar, and within minutes of talking to a girl, he'd be like, hey, can you hold my drink for a sec? Then he'd chat with us while she's holding his drink. I used to think it was rude, but Doug had that unwavering belief that he was the prize. He thought, why wouldn't she want to hold my drink? And you know what? It worked for him. There's something about doing someone a favor that makes us like them more. Now, you don't have to go crazy with this. You don't need a girl doing you favors left and right. But don't shy away from asking for a favor early on. It could be as simple as her mentioning she's great at editing phone videos. You say, hey, can you show me how to do it? But don't make the favor an excuse to hang out. That's a different story. We've all made the mistake. If she's into yoga, and you're like, can you show me how to do it? She might think you're just using it as an excuse. Instead, you could ask, can you make me a video on how to do that? Just record yourself doing it. Now it feels genuine. She's putting in some work, and she's sitting there with the camera wondering why she's doing it. And weirdly enough, she starts feeling a liking towards you. It's strange but true. Now let's dive into setting and communicating standards. A few years back, I was checking out different dentists for some cosmetic dental work. It was intriguing. This whole concept of being the prize. Some dentists I'd walk in, and it felt like they were hovering trying to cater to my every need, asking if I wanted water or anything, bombarding me with questions. Then, after leaving, I'd get emails like, have you decided yet? Any questions? It made me wonder why they were working so hard to win me over. On the flip side, the dentist I ended up choosing had a sign saying, if you're more than five minutes late, you'll have to reschedule. Pretty straightforward, right? I thought it was a bit harsh, but it got me thinking. When I mentioned I had somewhere to go, he was like, no exceptions. If you're over five minutes late, we schedule. And when I tried to cut to the chase about costs, he said, no, I don't need to explain everything. It felt odd, but he wasn't apologetic. He was matter of fact, stating the price a few grand higher than others. He simply said, you're paying for quality. No pleading emails followed. I chose him because, in my mind, he set and communicated his standards, and he didn't need my business desperately. Now, how does this relate to women? One example is not letting a woman downgrade your meetups. Say you plan for dinner, and she suggests lunch instead. A lot of guys, fearing they might miss a chance, go along with it. But the real move is to communicate standards, say, why don't we reschedule for a night you're free? I prefer dinner. You might think you're risking losing the chance, but in her mind, you just communicated that meeting up with her isn't so crucial that you'd settle for lunch. It's setting your standards, letting her know you're the prize. So let's say you're like, hey, this Friday, I've got tickets for this event. Want to join? And she hits you with the classic. I'll let you know. I'm still figuring things out. A lot of girls pull that move, just respond, you know what, I can tell this week might not work for you, let's plan it another time, take the offer off the table, 
Because if you're not into wishy-washy behavior, if you're not down for a girl downgrading your plans, then don't give her the opportunity. Just take the offer away. That's what a prize would do. So guys, communicate your standards.